What's up, guys? We are back with another podcast episode, and we actually have a lot to talk about this week. There was <laughs> quite a bit in the news. Uh, probably the most entertaining weekend of pickleball I have seen in a long time, but we'll get to that in a minute. First, we just want to go over two paddles. Uh, one of them that you guys are probably all asking questions about, or at least I got a lot of emails <laughs> about it, and Will has some thoughts. Oh, no, well, okay, no, it's different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely not the bird, but we will talk about the bird. For those of you who don't know, the bird is uh, a, well, actually, I think it's called the Falcon, and bird is the company, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yes. So, Are you sure? No, we should know this. We should know this. I almost feel like it's bad if I'm we pretty, get this wrong. I, well, go ahead and look it up quick if you want, but I'm pretty positive because on the paddle it says Falcon, and yep, then. Yep. You're right. Yeah. Bird, pickleball. And then yep. the paddle is, like you said, probably the Falcon. Yeah. So they sent me this, and you guys have probably seen ads for it. It's that saw paddle. So it's not, the you know. Saw, a, the, a, so you call it the saw paddle? No, it's 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 the pistol paddle. That's what nah, I nah. That thing is for sure a saw. On, dude. That's a, that's a pistol, bro. That's a pew pew. <laughs> I'll tell you on. what. Here's what we'll do. Leave a comment down below. If you guys don't know what this is, look it up and tell me. If you're Team Will or Team Chris on this yeah, one, if we'll you're let team the people pistol decide. Or Team Saw, dude, that's definitely, that's definitely a pistol, dude. I'm just saying, okay, if if this paddle does like decently well at all, there's so much room for design um, creativity for this paddle <laughs> to make it look like a saw, or to to make it look like a like a shark or something. Like the graphics could be really cool. <laughs> I will be stunned if this thing ever catches on because, first of all, I think it's two hundred and twenty dollars, which is it's an insane. Two okay, two hundred and thirty, yeah, an insane right, asking price for a very weird paddle. And now, there are some things that were better than I thought they would be about it, and probably worse. So serves terrible. I, like, really? Everyone who picked this up, except Isaac, served the ball out like three times <laughs> in a row. It, here's what would happen. You would try and serve it diagonally as you do, and the ball would literally just go straight like you were trying to nasty Nelson the person. It was. I don't know how to explain it. You would what? just have to hit with it. It's so weird. Now, rolls, pretty yeah. sick. I'm not going to lie. Those feel good. I told, um, you. I told you they were going to be sick blocks are a little weird and drives i didn't i didn't like drives with it pretty much everything i wanted to be a drop and every you know how uh jw dinks the ball yeah the shovel yeah this is literally the perfect paddle for him because it would <laughs> suit his dinking it, it's literally built for jw honestly i would love if i ever see him i should try and put it in his hand because i think it'd be hilarious i think it would he might almost like it for that no he would like it yeah because jw likes those weird he likes things. the shovel yes yeah. he likes the shell he's like i could just tell he he it would light up his face i can see. so here's the thing guys after hitting this we hit it for you know like a game or two and just kind of goofed around with it i don't think the vat it's so niche there are gonna be so few people who find this thing really useful but there are a couple of you out there where this thing would probably be incredible whether it helped with your tennis elbow or you just really like i don't know like i'm sure there's some people who would love this but vast like 99.99 percent of the pickleball market will not want to buy this thing but it was an interesting concept raw carbon fiber face shaped like a saw or a pistol whichever way you want to go <laughs> and you, you know what's interesting will. i can't even check the swing weight on this thing because the handle isn't a normal handle <laughs> <laughs> i i was like wait there's no way for me to check this. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. So don't ask for the swing weight, but it does feel fast in the hand. I won't lie. Hmm. Okay. Well, definitely one of the more interesting paddles this year that you've come across. And it's not necessarily 100%. new either. I know there's yes. another company, PBZ. PBZ. They did. Yep. I've seen that out in the wild back when I was living in DC. And yep. uh, some older gentleman was using it. And I thought it was funky or funny but also it didn't surprise me nearly as much because i have seen the pistol grip paddles from table tennis before and so i don't know it wasn't anything new to me but yeah i'm curious to try it i do have there I, I do have two in my in my bag right now i haven't pulled it out or tried it just oh wait yet. you you got them at your house 
Yeah, I got them. I got them in my house. They're nice. still in the packaging. I wanted to like fly up and do like a first look like with you, like surprise you with it, but you already got it. So I was like, dang it. We should definitely still try and film a video together because I don't know that I'm going to pick it up for it. Like if I'm going to do a video, I don't think I want to do a regular video on it. It would just be funnier to do it with you. Okay. Like if we just okay. like played pickleball for a day and then oh, it was yeah. like, how good can we get with this by the end of the day? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're, we're totally doing that. And then we can do a challenge video like you and I both go to i don't know your local courts or lifetime or wherever and we just challenge everybody and just see how we do and see if we that win would, some that sort would of be challenge funny. and then each time i get a winner you already know i'm going to be pointing at our opponent and go pew pew like it's, it's you're going to take my paddle so you can dual wield <laughs> the dual well, that's right come on it's too Duelies. good that's funny <sighs> Oh my gosh. Well, tell me about the Pickleball Apes. So I'll give some thoughts after you, but a lot of people yeah. have been asking about this thing since John's review. Yes. Um, they did reach out to me before uh, a while ago. Uh, I think the guy knows or is connected with uh, somebody at Electrum. And he reached out to me, asked me about it. I gave him some feedback. He just sent me photos. He sent me some specs. And uh, I took the time to actually just kind of give my thoughts on what he should do and on the specs and then apparently i mean in in the next email he sent to me he's because i didn't hear from him from a while and then he said hey we took some of your your thoughts into consideration and we've kind of finalized the product and he shipped it to me and i had it but since i was gone i, I didn't get it until i came back and i know john got it first i did talk to john about it as well and it is a very good paddle i i could just say it right now it kind of fits the specs that I currently like in a paddle and I have been looking for a longer handle paddle just like a little bit just to be a little bit more comfortable for my uh, two hands not that the paddles out right now are bad or anything but or that I can't get used to them but that was nice and the feel of it is it's thermoformed I would say it's in, in my opinion on the softer side of 100%. some of the other therm thermoform paddles I played with, but I, I like that and honestly I've been finding that i have been gravitating towards a little bit softer paddles as of late um i don't know what it is maybe i'm just playing higher level people and my drops aren't nearly as good as good enough or my resets aren't good enough but i'm like oh man i think i need something softer to to handle this but that paddle hits very well i would put it in line with kind of i don't know maybe a prism v7 that's kind of like where like power and touch and feel kind of like makes sense uh, to me. And I will say it's and a real good quick. Power. Yeah. Just just before, because I think I realized I probably should have mentioned this right away. Uh, so the paddle we're talking about, the Pickleball Apes Pro Line Energy, it's a the, energy. it's kind of claim to fame is that it's using a hybrid surface. So it's using a Kevlar face and a carbon fiber. And then face. it has it's the, like you know, peel plied. Quill exactly yeah. so it looks like a 3k carbon fiber face and then has the you know raw carbon fiber epoxy resin on top of it so it gets great spin that's the reason it kind of gained some traction as as far as i'm aware no one has tried kevlar for the face they've done it for the core which hasn't mm -hmm. felt that great but for the face it was actually kind of a unique feel yeah it, it does have a unique feel and also has a pretty cool look in my opinion yes. i think that look oh and it's really long it's 17 inches long Se yeah, yeah 17 most, inches long. not many paddles do that Right. I wanted to compare it with a Vulcan, was it V740? No, not 740. V710 or 20, one of those two. Seven, yeah, 710 or 720. The one that Tyler Lung, um plays with or used to play with, that kind of blade kind of shape, very narrow. And I thought I would have issues with it. And I did, like just dinking around. But once you kind of got used to it, it, it wasn't that bad. Um, and I will say that it feels really good for my back and it really it feels really good if you are what i like to call a a guider you have a guiding kind of stroke versus a shaping kind of stroke and when i when i say that you'll see players that look like they really shape the ball and whip it across their body like really aggressively you know kind of like modern tennis forehands like in like a nick curios right and then the guiders kind of have a more straightforward um kind of stroke that i mean not that it doesn't go across the body but like you know you kind of push it forward and then you don't 
whip it across your body nearly as fast. And that's the kind of the stroke that I kind of have. And it felt really good for that, in my opinion. Um, good spin, soft touch. Like I said, it kind of plays like the like the, the Vatic uh, prism, V7 to me. Yeah, I, I really liked the feel off the face. I thought it was really pleasant, definitely a little bit softer. Resets were the only thing that I wasn't liking in my first few test sessions because it, uh, you know, just with it being more narrow, because yeah. for those of you who don't know, a paddle can only be 24 inches width and length combined. So that means if you do 17 inches, you're going to be 17 inch uh, length and then a seven inch width and usually if it's a 16 and a half paddle which is a normal elongated then you're going to get a seven and a half inch width and that half inch makes a surprising difference like balls yes. that i'm used to resetting would just be done because i'm hitting it right on the edge so i'm sure i could get used to it uh but i actually think if they made this paddle in a hybrid shape which i think i heard they're working on in my they discord are. yeah that might be really cool i might be a pretty big fan of that right right i think they 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 should i mean i think it's smart for them to come out with the 17 inch because it's something that's actually really different so yes. you know get people to talk about it and then if people like it then i could imagine that a more standard shape paddle would probably be you know better right at least yes. for most people um, yeah so i'd be curious to it's see, good yeah, i'm really curious to see what they do it was a good way to stand out because 17 inch paddles are not very common. The only ones I can, I know there are other ones out there, but the ones that came to mind are, you know, the Tyler Loon one you mentioned, mm -hmm. the new Oya one that I'm reviewing this month, and then this one. So yeah. it's a, you know. And the Wilson Juice XL. Oh my gosh, that thing is so <laughs> weird. <laughs> exactly. So it, it was a good way to stand out. And the handle length, I think, is a. Uh, it's pretty ideal because like the Oya, there's going to be people who love that thing because it's just a monstrosity of a handle. But right. the Pickleball Apes does a really good job at being very long where I think the vast majority of people can put two hands on it comfortably because you said you didn't have to put your finger on the back anymore, right? No, I didn't. Right. Yeah. So and I think if you don't want like a seven inch handle, which is really huge, this is probably a really good middle ground not being yeah. insane, you know? Yeah, no, I, I did enjoy it. I'm probably going to hit with it uh, a little bit more just to see. And uh, I mean, if I was looking to switch it, it honestly would be up there. It's a con it would be a contender for sure. Nice. Yeah, that's that's high praise from Will. Yes. <laughs> Very high <praise> <laughs> while, while it lasts, while it lasts until next week, until next week. <laughs> come on, man. You got to do me like that. Come on. <laughs> hey, look, come on. The viewers already know. They already know. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. That's funny. Um, okay. I want to talk about this quick. Quick. I mean, I think it's already been talked about to death this weekend, which in a two day span is, what is it? insane to think it happened. But I mean, you saw the, the whole Anna Lee Waters versus Tyra yes, clip at the that, end. Honestly, that was probably the only thing from this PPA that I really saw. I heard about some other things, but I've been just busy doing my own stuff. And honestly, just with the traveling and everything, I was like, okay, I want to stay away from pickleball. And I was like, oh, missing one tournament. It's not a big deal. And of course, the one that I decided to like tune out on, like the craziest stuff happens. And I'm like, oh, 100%. Of if there was a tournament to pick to be the one you tuned out, this was not the one to do. Like, but you heck? couldn't have known that ahead of time, obviously. Well, of course not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but okay, so, so so you saw the clip, right? I saw the clip. You you told me. You you actually texted me. He's like, dude, Emily Waters is off her rocker. You said something along those lines. I'm like, what? What happened? And then she's like, yo, go to the stream go back like three minutes, watch the end of the thing. And then I was just, <laughs> I watched it and I was just baffled. I didn't understand what I just saw. And then yeah. it took a little while. So I don't know, what, what were your thoughts on it? Well, so I had a lot of thoughts about this. So this was a really interesting one where I think a lot of the internet just got really worked up, really heated over. Oh, what did they say? Know, Oh, just so many different. I mean, there was opinions going both ways. Either oh, I got you know, to hear this because it was yeah, bizarre, it was like, but I, I don't know if it was anything bad or anything that I thought the internet would you know get riled up about. Oh no, dude! People got riled up for riled sure. Up? A lot of people were doing stuff like for her you know, or against her, like, like both, both. Okay, Mo a lot of against, but both for sure. So it was like. Oh, she's a spoiled brat. Like, she can't handle losing. Like, she stole that moment from Tyra. Like, it was such a weird way to exit. She made it about herself. And, like, just a lot of okay. really 
mean things. And so I wrote about this in my newsletter a mm -hmm. little bit. And if you want, I'll try and remember to link in the show notes or the description. Uh, NML Pickleball did a really great write up on the whole thing. And I think they summarize a lot of my thoughts really well mm -hmm. and add like a couple additional thoughts. But here was my perspective on this because I feel like I have I have some experience in this. So okay. One, she's 16. That was also another big debate. Some people were like, it shouldn't matter that she's 16. Like, you're in an adult world, in an adult game. Like, get over it. You need to grow up, which oh, wait, I think there's... Oh, an adult game? Shoot. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> let me know. Yeah. <laughs> not for Will, not for Will. <laughs> but it, I get both of those sides. Like, yes, I think you are probably going to grow up a little faster or probably even expected to, but also still 16 like dude i don't know hmm. anyways but th there was all of that and my perspective was basically like unless you've been in a situation where you have been number one and you right. win all the time you yeah. have no idea what it feels like to be in that spot and like i have a little <laughs> bit of experience Most with that because players have no experience doing anything competitive or physical and, and i put physical a quote unquote for pickleball just because like comparative to some other things pickleball right. is at least doubles is i mean i know it can be physical but it's not as physical as some other things you could be doing out there let's just let's put it out there for sure real. for sure so oh where was i even going with that oh yeah just like being number one so like in speed cubing I was friends with one of the, well, no, he was definitively Jeez. the world's best. Like he <laughs> Dude, was like he was the Michael nuts. Phelps of speed cubing. Like this guy was literally the best for 10 years straight. You could not beat this guy. This guy was insane at every event he did. Mm -hmm. And what you, what happens when you get to the point where you win every single tournament is you're yeah. expected to win and everyone wants you to lose because they're mm -hmm. sick of you winning. You have a target on your back. Everyone yep. wants to beat you. Everyone wants you to lose. So when you win, it's not even a feeling of like victory or celebration. Yeah, it's, it's like a feeling of relief. Exactly. It's like, yeah. oh my gosh, okay, I didn't pressure. I didn't get beat. Exactly. And I got to experience that a little bit because the event I did, it was a very similar thing. I just didn't have the same length of dominance but like when i would win things it was like okay geez like at least we didn't lose that one and i never really had people rooting against me but you know when there's people on the everyone loves the underdog so when yeah. someone's gaining on you they want that person to win and anna lee i'm sure has been experiencing that for a long time there's a lot of people who wanted to lose people constantly talk about it's boring that she wins everything so i just think being 16 years old having a crowd that really wanted Tyra to win. Mm -hmm. You haven't experienced a lot of loss before. Mm -hmm. I think there was just a lot of emotions that came out. And here was the biggest perspective hit when I was writing my newsletter. There are people in pickleball, we have all seen it, who lose their mind over things in rec play that have zero bearing or merit on anything in your life. Like we've all been in that situation mm -hmm. where someone calls an out ball and a dude just loses it. He's like, that ball yeah. is in, he throws his paddle, he's yelling, he's <laughs> There's nothing on the line. I'd be willing to bet most people who have listened to this podcast have probably had a reaction to something on the court that mm -hmm. they wish they hadn't done. Almost yes. guarantee it. Yes, we've so, all regretted yeah, we've all regretted regretted something, right? Exactly. So to me, I'm like, everyone's like, oh, she should act better. She should be a more graceful loser. And I'm like, okay, but the amount of pressure that this person's in and you yourself have probably thrown some kind of tantrum on the court over nothing. I'm like, I even actually, I experienced this this weekend and this is probably where some perspective came from. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll get to this more later, but this week, this is actually a really embarrassing story for me. Uh, ah, so yes. I was playing, we were doing the team tournament I had this weekend. We had a team practice and um, Omrik, the like coach of our team or whatever, he yes. was like giving us some help. Like who should we play with in our lineup? Who should play mixed together? Blah, blah, blah. Who should play what side? And uh, I just played awful. I can't remember the last time I played this bad. I just felt useless on the court. And then I was like, 
in mixed. I was missing balls I shouldn't miss, like easy putaways, and then I didn't want to come over as much. And then my mixed partner was like expecting Wait, I me to. That's and how then you always play. <laughs> not always, not always. But <laughs> long story short, I just played awful. I lost every single game that night, and I was just getting progressively more and more frustrated. And by the last game, I had dumped like probably five serve returns into the net. And I was just so over it that I literally just grabbed my bag and left. Like there were still oh, games to be played. You didn't say but, bye to nobody. You just left. No, I said bye to no one. In fact, my mixed partner tried to what? stop me She because she could tell something was wrong. It was pretty obvious that I was upset. And she was like, you know, like, hey, what's wrong? Like, why are you leaving? And I just <sighs> right out the door, got in my car and left. And in hindsight, like, I feel bad. Like, I apologize to everyone. Like, it wasn't, mm -hmm. you know, very great of me. But... I, that practice and this tournament has, there's basically of no importance. I mean, yeah, it's cool. Like the tournament's really cool, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not my livelihood. <laughs> there's, it's there's not for someone, anything. There's Go somebody on your team right now listening to that. And he's like, what do you see talking about? This tournament is everything to me. It's my stepping stone <laughs> to becoming pro. They're just thinking in their head right now. <laughs> That's okay. Like, we'll Ruben get to did. that. We're going to, we're going to talk about the team tournament. Uh, okay. cause that was just a practice. That wasn't the actual tournament, but mm -hmm. All of that to say, I I feel like I am extremely level-headed. I can count on one times the amount of times I've lost my cool on a court. Right. And so for me to do that for this, I'm just like, I don't know. I get it. I actually felt just more sympathy for her than anything. And I hope in the future she learns from it. I hope she acts better. I'm not saying she should do this and get a free pass. But I right. am saying there's a lot going on that on the surface, you're never going to see or know. understand. And I just right. think people got to cut people a break. Right, true. Everybody's going through something that they don't want to talk about or can't talk about. And this could just be one of those things. And yeah, I hear it. And for the people who are saying that she should be a better loser or more graceful loser, I, I don't, I mean, easier said than done. That's a, that's a skill, right? That you have 100%. to develop, right? And managing your emotions and whatnot, that's also a skill. Uh, so I can see your perspective giving her, you know, some, you know, some lack, some, some credit to, to that in her age and whatnot. But I'm, I'm sure other people are arguing the other side too. It's like, oh, your age. A hundred percent. Doesn't matter or, yeah. or whatnot. But, uh, I don't know because like your age, yes, it, it matters, but also I, I think you need to talk more about less of the age and more of the maturity because I met very young individuals that are way more mature and vice versa right so yeah i think that's what people need to kind of focus on but also i think that's a good like learning lesson for you know Annie waters as well to you know reflect on how she kind of acted hopefully she's i hope she's all right though like i don't know if this same bothered her or whatnot hopefully she I'm, right. I'm sure she's fine like i'm sure she Annie waters has a great support system Right. Yeah. Hopefully her yeah. mom can coach her or help her through that. But also, I don't know to like just remembering that one time her mom kind of like was complaining about that that lob the incident. Lob. So, so I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, for sure. I'm sure it's fine though. I'm sure it's fine. Yes, for sure. And the last thing I'll say on this is it didn't hurt anybody, right? A... Like she didn't she didn't do anything like really negative. It was just it was just bizarre. I remember just being bizarre. No, she didn't it was yell just at weird. Anybody. Okay. No. So no. No. Kind of like no harm, no foul. Like. She didn't hurt anybody, so I think it's fine. Yeah, it was just like when you watched, you were just like, wait, what did I just watch? Like it, yeah, I don't know. I understood the like, oh, like she stole Tyra's moment. Here's the thing. And there's going to be spoilers throughout this episode, guys. So I'm saying this now. So whatever I'm about to say doesn't spoil it for you. So that's your warning if you want to pause. But here's the thing, guys. Tyra beat Annalie Waters and also ended up winning this tournament. I'm pretty positive Tyra will get over that moment and probably doesn't care uh, if yeah. I'm going to be honest. Tyra's also a competitor. She used to compete in like junior ten, like uh, junior yep. tennis, right? And, and just professional tennis. Yeah, and it was professional tennis. Look, Tyra's fine. I, I met, I yeah. talked to Tyra and uh, like Tyra knows what she's doing. She, she understands yeah. the like competition side. She understands the emotional side. She understands like the marketing side. And yeah, Tyra's going to be perfectly fine. Yeah. Last thing I'll say on this, because I thought it is just like a interesting double standard. And I, I feel like we see this throughout 
sports quite a bit. But yeah, we have Anna Lee who has, you know, like a pretty out of ordinary reaction for her, um, but ultimately probably not that bad. But then we also just don't really care when Tyson is snapping paddles, Pablo's <laughs> flipping knee. people off, Alshin no, we and we Tyson are having arguments. But I just don't feel like people We're care like they did this. Yeah, like I see. people will talk about it, but it's kind of like, oh, well, like, yeah, they're just going to be like that. Or like, you know, a lot of times when guys get angry, it's like, oh, well, they're just like really passionate. And I'm like, I, and now here's the thing. I don't necessarily mind when like they snap a paddle or something. I'm not like bent out of shape, but I'm also like, okay, well then why do we got to get bent out of shape over this? It's not like she snapped a paddle, threw it at someone, cussed someone out and then ran off the court. Right. Exactly. So not a big deal. Yeah. So I'm surprised it was as big a deal as it was, as, as you're telling me, because all I did was watch. It. I didn't look at the comments. I didn't read any forums or articles about it. So I'm kind of surprised that, yeah, it was as big as it got. In yeah, it was hmm. it was crazy, but you know, everyone will get over it, everyone will move past it. It is what it is, but I just thought I'd share some thoughts on it cuz I felt like I just had thoughts on it and I wanted yeah. to share it. <laughs> was it memed on? Like it had, it had to have been. Oh yeah, on. memes of pickleball had memes all right. <laughs> memes Memes of pickleball, come on guys, go to their page. They had some good <laughs> memes from this weekend. If you <laughs> After we talk, have this pod, you need to go look at their page, Well, because okay. they had some bangers this weekend. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it was good stuff. All right. Anyways, yes. we'll talk about the rest of the tournament uh, this weekend because, like I said, probably the most entertaining one I have seen in a long time. This was and the it was Takaya Showcase, City. right? Yeah, Takaya Showcase. Takaya Showcase. Okay. Yep. Got it. So, so what, else, what else happened? Give me the deets. So Ben loses in singles to Yates Johnson, who I probably never would have saw that coming. That feels really random. What was the score? Do you know? Uh, you know, I actually don't remember off the top of my head. Did he do it in two or I, did he do it in three? Two, I believe. I should have pulled that up, but I'm pretty sure it was two. Okay. All right. All right. Continue. What other, what, what other happenings yep. happened? Okay. So then obviously Anna Lee lost to... Tie run three that was really entertaining and then on mixed day colin goes and rolls his ankle in mix slash Ooh. hurt his achilles i was hearing different things from the commentators but did you see that clip or no no i didn't see it oh man I was it bad this to you was well okay bad? he comes over for kind of like a poach and then like he just lands weird and then like you can see he's immediately in pain he falls onto the ground the point is still live like elise hits one ball and then the ball's going to Eric Lang, and Colin's laying on the ground. Clearly, he, like he's he's out. And then oh, it's like he, a, catch, he caught it. He caught the ball. <laughs> now even worse, Eric hits like a backhand overhead, kind of like a fadeaway, like you're not looking at it. Snaps it with his wrist, clocks Colin in the face, and then he Ooh. caught it. <laughs> so he hurts his Achilles and then gets popped in the face with a ball. I was like, Zion. it was like the ultimate insult to injury because he was on the ground for a minute when he got hit. Like it was, Wait, it was kind of sad. Did Eric mean to do it? No, you said it was a backhand, like kind of. Yeah, I don't think, I'm sure he meant to hit it in that direction because he knew Colin was on the ground, but I, Eric is a nice guy. I think there's zero chance yeah. on earth he was trying to hit him in the face. It was just a. Well, the person's on the ground. Like, yeah, you want to hit it in that direction because they're not going to return it, probably. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So that that was kind of crazy. Wait, wait. Uh, how did ben, he roll his ankle? Was he was he coming in from? Was he playing the left side or what? He happened? was playing left, and he was poaching to uh, the right. That's why he's not used to moving. You know, real fast from the left to the right. You know, so <laughs> shoot. Sorry, Colin. Shoot. <laughs> it happened. It bro. was. It was definitely unfortunate. That this that must may have been a just... new movement for him. You know, shoot. Oh, I got to say, you got to work that right ankle. Wait, was it his right ankle or was it his left? It was, it was right, his right, right ankle. ankle. Oh, man, you got to work that right ankle a bit, Colin. So come on, my guy. Let's go. Shoot. He never has to use it. Ben's always Ben's That's always what I'm saying. It for him. Yeah, exactly. So this must be very foreign to him. All I'm saying. I'm okay, just joking, now Colin. <laughs> Hope he's not listening. He, get, he don't get mad. <laughs> you, re you ready to hear the crazy part, though? There's a crazy okay. part? Well, for men's day. So... Colin plays through Men's Day, and I'm like, this is insane. How is no he? No way. He rolled his ankle and he played. Oh, it must. Not well, it's like his Achilles thing. or something. I'm not sure if it was exactly his ankle, but he he hurt something. 
Okay, men's day, you ready for these score lines? Game one. Well, uh, match one was some like people who I assume came from the qualifier. I don't know who they are. Um, okay. I think they got beat relatively handedly. Second game, beat Rafa, Hewitt, and Marshall Brown 11-4, 11-1. And this is with Colin walking to, like he would hit a drop or a return and he'd literally walk to the kitchen. Like okay. he's not moving. Yeah. Second or third, beat Gabriel Tardio and Jay Debillier uh, 6 11, 11 9, 11 4. Damn. Then okay. they play Connor Garnett and Matt Wright and beat them 11 5, 11 2 to make it to Championship Sunday. Easy. Hit the easy button. Oh my Colin gosh. Can barely move and they're still decimating teams. So, I mean, that's honestly it's kind of not surprising. First of all, you really don't need to move that much in dubs pickleball if you drops you could walk to the kitchen like yeah. you really wanted to well ben you, also took a ton of oh, court yeah okay so that that's also not surprising seeing what yeah. i've seen ben do playing 2v1s and coming out on top like in in person live it's yeah honestly not surprising i swear they just know something about the game that the rest of us don't <laughs> they know something it's, ben knows something that we just don't he understands a concept or something that we just don't understand like he does i don't know what it is practice that's probably what it is drilling <laughs> sure, I, I wouldn't know anything about that you know i don't drill <laughs> just kidding. just kidding i drilled for the first time this past saturday for like an hour and a half you know I mean? brionis that's pretty good be proud of me you'll be proud of me growing it's like yes <laughs> growing growing but okay so championship sunday they ended up playing uh J Dub and Dylan Frazier, and here mm-hmm. was the score line: eleven six for uh, Dylan and J Dub, eleven okay. four. Then they lose ten twelve, and then they win eleven four. I have Ooh. never seen the Johns get decimated so bad. And Colin was moving way, way better today than yesterday. Like he he didn't okay. have his knee brace thing on. He was actually kind of running to the kitchen. You could tell he was still off, but like. Yeah, he was definitely still off, but like much better. So I don't. It did, was. Did he have a brace on or something? He, not he, today. He wasn't on his knee. Okay, well, what was he wearing the day before when he did roll his well, ankle or injured? Was it a knee or was it an ankle thing? So what I heard or what Dave kept saying was that it was an Achilles like injury. But he did in one match that I watched, he had a band just below his knee. So I don't know what it was for. It looked like it was for his knee, but. So I don't know exactly what the injury was, okay. but something in that region. I see. Well, yeah. So shoot. it was a really good win for them. Honestly, still really entertaining pickleball. Ben was all over. They J Dub was hitting the most beautiful lobs I've ever seen in my life. And I love that he said this. I, I joked. I was like, memes of pickleball, it's gotta be like <laughs> they need to have like some meme where it was like J Dub calling Callan in the middle of the night and being like, I need you to teach me how to lob. I need it for tomorrow. <laughs> because, dude, baseline, painting the lines, like, it j- oh, I wish I had some clips to show you. Honestly, some of the best I'll lobs I've it. ever I'm seen. Sure. I'm sure, I'm sure the, the clips will, ha- will happen. Fifth Shot Media will do a nice little overview, get all the highlights. Yep. I'm sure I'll see it all for sure. Yeah, it, it was really good. So, congrats to them. That's a huge win. By J-Dub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never seen him do it so much, so... That was uh, that was pretty wild for wait, wait, sure. Was he was he lobbing Colin or was he lobbing? Yes, and then oh. Ben had to go get it. Oh, so did Ben and Colin have to do any switches? No, it would just Colin would just basically get out of the way, and then like usually Ben would just drop it back, or if okay. he caught it early enough, he would hit an overhead. But most of the time, he had to run back and do a drop. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty okay. wild. All right, congrats, um, J Dub yeah, con- and Dylan. That's back to back golds for them at a PPA. So like they're, you know what? Now that uh, they won oh, last yeah. week too, they did. You're right. It's because uh, Ben and Colin went out early, got yep. upset. Okay, okay. Yep. You know, you know. I mean, memes of pickleball's already picked up on this. They had a great meme for it today. But you know, Riley is pissed that him and Matt break up right as Ben and <laughs> Colin go out, and then they get injured. Yeah. He's like, dude, this is the easiest goal of our life if we didn't split up. Oh, yeah. Nah, he's fuming, probably. Maybe maybe he is. Maybe he's not. Who knows? Can't get a real Who knows? Riley. You know what, though? Uh, who probably one of my favorite men's doubles team to watch is now? Who? Thomas and Julian. 
that duo, I Thomas love Wilson it. and Julian Arnold. Yes, I absolutely because Thomas Why? is a athletic monster, and so is Julian. Obviously, yeah. Julian has a bunch of energy. Like I don't know what it is, but just watching them on the court, their body language to each other just looks very happy. They are just such a powerhouse team. Like, I, dude, I loved watching their game last night. Like, I so good. I I hope they play more together because I absolutely love that team. Well, we don't know that, right? Because isn't Julian playing with Riley a lot? There's going to be a couple more tournaments. He's uh, Riley's okay. switching between AJ and Julian till the end of the to year, I think. You know what yeah. Julian told me? He said that he's playing the left side with Riley. Yeah, they did. They actually, I think in last week, uh, I think they s- tried it with Riley on the left after they won one game, I think. I might mm-hmm. be remembering that wrong. But, yes, that was the the plan. You know, Riley gets to hit his backhand. Yeah. But it's kind of just a weird pairing to me because it's Why? just too, it's two big alphas. Like, I just feel like someone's got to concede a little bit. And you know the one that has to concede would probably be Julian. I don't know. Oh, dang. I just Wait, feel are you like calling be uncomfortable. Julian? What? What are you trying no, to say? No, but you know, you know, <laughs> Riley wants to be the one to take the court. I mean, maybe he will. Still from the right side. Who knows? For sure. I mean, I, I didn't watch much last week, okay. but I'm sure that is what happened. So okay, I don't know. Well, so did did Thomas and and Julian get any notable wins or? They got bronze. Oh, they got bronze. Okay. Yeah, they ended uh, up beating Matt Wright right. and Connor Garnett in the final. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Or not wait, in the, the final, finals. but in the and, and the bronze medal match. Bronze. Okay, match. I was about to say. I was like, wait a second. Yeah, yeah. You just telling me J Dub and Dylan won? <laughs> <laughs> Psych. Psych. Uh, no, no, man. I, I I see that man. Uh, Julian is uh yeah Julian's a beast. I mean, I got to play with him, and uh, you know, man, Julian's the real deal. He's good. Also, when I was in Seattle, I saw Thomas and Deckelbar. They were hitting at these local courts at Green Lake, like in the corner, like practicing for the PPA, and I just thought it was funny. Like they're just why. Just because these courts are not, they're not dedicated. They're not the best looking courts, but to see them out there just practicing with the plebs, quote unquote, I just thought it was, you know, in in the backdrop of the plebs sure. of everybody else. I thought it was just kind of interesting. You don't see that very often. That's true. You don't see it too often. Don't see it too often. Um, but yeah, the only other thing that uh, was also a pretty huge upset was. Gabriel Joseph, which haven't heard that name in a, a long time here. He yeah, ends up like getting 20, 21. 20. <laughs> yeah. He he got gold at this tournament. He beat Dang. Fed 11 6, 12 10. He beat Fed? Yep. Oh my gosh. Dude, I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen Gabriel. I've seen like small clips of him here and there, but it was forever ago. Dude is a really good athlete. Like oh, he yeah. is fast yeah he's so fast i've seen him in person a few times and remember when i first got into pickleball i would see his clips and his highlights and yeah he's schmoving like, and his backhand schmoving. really good he also has a really good two-handed backhand yeah i can't uh, honestly it was probably so long ago the last time i saw him was he was still playing with electrum i think yeah he was yeah. with electrum but he didn't yeah play with so him anymore. but he, he got a win he, that's good for him shoot you know what's uh it funny about this i have my uh tier list my like annual tier list video like ranking the pickleball paddles yeah coming out this week and i'll i won't spoil any results oh, but after go. watching this i was like all right maybe they need to go up a slot <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing here's the thing one one i don't i don't care i don't ever base it off of what pros are winning but i had some like reasoning oh, wait, wait. Gabriel Joseph, he's playing with a new pad. He's playing with the, sp- the spade. Yeah, the, the ace. He's actually the playing ace. with their newest one, which is the the diamond, which has the Kevlar core, or as I like to say, just Nomex, Nomex. rebranded. Yes. Uh, but yeah, that's what that's what he was playing with, and he was he was cruising, man. He was hitting some bombs. So I don't know. Was maybe this I got to revisit that battle. With it? No, I'm sure he. It's actually funny. I think in his post match interview, they said like, "So are you going to be playing more PPAs now that you got a golden?" He was like, "Well." Something he says, I'm like not to correct you, but I've actually played like ten or twelve PPAs this year. <laughs> <laughs> it was really funny. So I'm sure he's been playing with it for a while. I think the paddle officially launched in June, and if I had to guess, he was probably playing with it even before that. So I see. But yeah, okay. he really, honestly, really fun to watch it. Dude seems like a total stud. He 
just a really seems just like a nice guy. Like even after he won, like this was a local tournament for him. Like he's from that area Mm -hmm. and they're asking him like, you know, how does it feel or whatever? And he's like, honestly, like this win is for like everyone here. He's like, these aren't even fans. These are just like friends, family, like people I coach. He was like, it's, he just seems like a great guy. I, it's awesome. Yeah. I hope we see more of him completely like new results, like completely different results. it was awesome. It was fantastic. I loved wow. it. So many upsets. Oh, and well, we said it, we said it earlier, but you know, Tyra got uh, gold. She gave like a also a very heartfelt interview. If you can find it online, it's honestly worth watching. She just okay. like she was in a lot of tears, and she was just talking about how she was like, "I'm gonna paraphrase, paraphrase and try and summarize," but it was essentially like, you know, I played tennis all of growing up. I like really never liked it. I like wasn't that passionate about it, but like. I love pickleball and it just feels so awesome to like That's get awesome. this win here. It was just a really good interview. Like it, it honestly, not that I didn't like her before. I just didn't know that much about her, but this really made me, I was like, I like you. This is okay. good. Sick. Wait, and who won mixed? Uh, mixed. Well, yeah. Annalie and Ben. Oh, okay. So yeah, not, not complete overhaul changes. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> not, not complete overhaul, but wait, who did um, they play against? Do you know who they played against? johnson's um okay the johnson uh, georgia and jw mm. yeah all right so trying to think if there was any other small things throughout the weekend i think those were most of the notable ones all memes of pickleball did have a thing that was talking about tyra black basically it was the clip of her i don't know if it was her first pro tournament i think it was actually where she gets double pickled on stream by anna lee waters and then it says and then 127 days later, she beats Annalie and gets gold at a PPA. It's like, dude, that's pretty. Dang. Getting double pickled and then getting a gold and a win on Annalie, that is. That's pretty. The way to come awesome. back. Yeah, yeah. That must feel good to see that story come up again or to yeah. be reminded of that. Sheesh. Yeah. That's pretty pretty legendary in my opinion. So, yeah, you're going to have to tune into the into the next one, except then we're probably just going to get the usual <laughs> results that we always get. <laughs> well, that that was what I was going to ask you next. Do you think this is the beginning of some, some you know, the changing of the guard a little bit, or do you think that this was just a blip off of, you know, what is the norm, you know? Are we going to go back to normal, normal, quote-unquote normal? I think in some ways it was a blip, but also, I mean, we've been seeing it for a while now. Like, teams are pushing – the t- Anna Lee and Ben like more and more and more, especially Ben in singles. Like he's, is this maybe his third <laughs> loss in singles this year? Connor, um, you know, nearly got him. Uh, he lost to Alshon. He lost to Yates. Like he's getting pushed hard. And obviously Dylan and JW are coming up and like Federico and Pablo. I have a feeling they are going to study up, come back and kick some butt very soon. But also, I just think the field is getting really, really good, especially for men's singles. Yeah, they're they're getting real strong. Okay, some exciting things to happen. Do you still enjoy watching singles, or yeah. do you still enjoy I like singles? It. Yeah, I still yeah. like it too. I don't know how the rest of the community feels about singles, but do you think singles should should still stay? Is there a place for singles? Because you know you hear about it every so often that people are like just yeah. do away with singles pickleball is the doubles game, but I don't know. I think. I- what do you think? I don't want it to leave. I think I think it's good to have it. I personally here's my thought. I think that pros would feel less uh strong about getting rid of it if the pay wasn't so much less than what it is for doubles. Like that's one of the big arguments I hear is it's like, well, why would I destroy my body when there's two doubles events that I could possibly go and get more money like noticeably more money for? You know, there's just no reason. Like, so I think even, they, even the split. Are you talking even even with the split? Yeah, even after the split, partner? you get more. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I think that needs some fixing. Um, but I just I really like watching it. I think it shows off a lot of really good athleticism in pickleball. I also just like singles. I'm sure it is considerably the lower viewed, um, you know, event. But I don't know. I I think it's good to keep, and I hope we don't get rid of it. Right. Real quick question: Do you know what the payouts are? right now for singles doubles mixed are they they off the top of my head i think it probably changes per tournament 
I need to come back to that because I was just wondering. I haven't thought about it or looked it up in a while, and yeah. I'm just curious to see like how much the payouts are now and if they've increased substantially or not, and you know something to keep an eye out on because that will probably draw more players into the mix, you know, uh, or trying to go pro and whatnot. Okay, for sure. All right, moving on. You ready for this one? Uh, I don't know. Grit Gate is back, baby. Oh, we got yeah. rid of D Lamb and Core Crushing, and we're back to Grit Gate, baby. Oh, you mean Corruption? Yes. <laughs> corruption, <you>. yes. <laughs> I usually think, I'm not going to lie, dude, more people have settled on that than not. Like, I think you yes. you really coined that term. So Yes. Now, John Q asked me, and he's like, Core. Sometimes we'll say Core Corruption, I hear it, but he's asked me, and some people asked me, and uh, I did mention it in my. Uh, Selkirk uh, you video where I explained delamination <laughs> and so I used it I said it like three times I'm like okay if this if this catches on this will be amazing I'll have some supplanted I mean not supplanted I'll have solidified my legacy in the pickleball space by coining this term <laughs> by coining one term <laughs> yes coining one term. Ah. that's so funny okay well Zane's paddle has been getting challenged left and right at different tournaments uh, Yo. you're seeing really good singles results from it uh zane's obviously been using it been challenged several times connor garnett's been been an app with it zane has been not doing so great not zane i'm just zane (laughs) we don't yeah zane (laughs) zane doesn't even get results anymore i'm just kidding we love you zane (laughs) we love you but you know he got when it came out uh rafa challenged it right away and then i think he's had it challenged himself a couple other times Connor Garnett's kicking absolute butt with it. He's had it challenged multiple times. Mm-hmm. And then I know there's some other people uh, kind of coming into the scene that have been. Andre, Andre Mick coming in on the scene. He's he, he plays with it. He kills it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So Watch out for him. it's it's catching some noise. And with all the challenges, uh, you know, started especially recently because NML came out with an article about how the PPA was basically changing the rules because of Zane's paddle. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I think I read that article. I think I read that yeah. article. Yeah, they're just kind of switching the goalposts and NML. was basically, it's honestly the same kind of story. There's no transparency. They're changing. They're moving the goalposts. Yep. Uh, and they're just kind of making the rules on the fly. We have no results or information on when things get challenged, the results of those challenges, what consequences come of it, and... It's got to be frustrating, like for everybody, for us as viewers, for us as paddle nerds, for the pros, for, I mean, uh, probably the companies too. Like, hey, you don't have something, we're going to try to skirt around these rules or, you know, they don't have a base foundation to innovate upon, right? Yeah. Yep. hundred percent. And so here's what's interesting. So obviously started generating a bunch of noise. So I got another one to yep. check it because I was like, you know what? Maybe my first one was a dud, and ProXR yeah. loves to remind me all the time. They're like, hey, this paddle gets challenged more than anything else. Your spin results are clearly wrong. So I was like, okay, let's check it out again. So I haven't gotten to really do much with it yet just because busy weekend, but I put it under a microscope. This grit is not like anything I have ever seen before, and it's not even close to what my original one was. So yeah, I don't know different. if something changed from the first one in terms of grit, but like this one feels more rough and under the microscope, like I don't have a way to explain it. I'm sure at some point I'll make a video talking about this, especially if the results of the paddle are drastically different than what they were before, but very different. So something changed. Either I got a completely different one or they changed it at some point. No, they changed it at some point because it was the same with me. I have, I had one of the first ones, like this was handed to me by Zane, like out of his bag, right? And I took it. And I'm like, okay. And I did like it. I still like it. I still think it's a great paddle. Still think it's ugly. Um, but <laughs> when I was at the Beer City Open, and I was sitting right behind uh, Craig, Craig, Greg, Craig Schmidt, the uh, the paddle Carl customer. Schmidt. Carl Schmidt. Oh, my gosh. Sorry, Carl. Yeah, we were, we were talking. And so people would come in, and they would test their paddles and stuff. And I was right behind him, and I watched him do the test. And sometimes I got to feel these pros' paddles. And when I got Connors... I was like, oh my gosh, this thing <laughs> is a nail file. <laughs> like, yeah. what is this thing? And I'm I'm exaggerating, but there's there's other ones that are probably just as gritty or feel just as gritty. But yeah, I was like, this is not like what I remembered. It is, yeah, it's different. Yeah. So what'd you tell? What, what were your findings? 
Well, I still I need to do some like I need to actually do some stuff this coming week. It was mostly the the microscope for now, and then I'll do some you know actual play testing with it. Probably check like swing weight and uh, twist weight and see if those numbers are also any different from my first one. But who knows? Maybe maybe this paddle will just be completely different from what I first hit, and we'll give it uh, we'll give it a second round. If the spin's insane, as I mean, I even had I won't name names, but I had. I had someone text me and they're like, what's the highest spinning paddle in pickleball? And I told them like what my results were. And they were like, dude, I hit, I hit Zane's paddle. And that thing has got to be the highest spin I've ever hit in my life. And mm. I was like, okay, well, something with this thing is going crazy right now. Yeah. And I've heard, I think NML, I'll try and leave that in the show note as well. But, you know, they talked about how there's possibly some things they're doing with the grit to basically cheat might be the the too strong of a word but like basically it is in some directions really rough probably the directions that it matters to be rough for hitting the ball and then other directions it's really low so when you use the stare it the average level comes down to be legal uh and mm-hmm. then it's fine but in the axis that it needs to be rough it's really rough and looking at the grit under a microscope clearly something's going on so right i we'll just see. don't know why they didn't tell you like when they when we first both got the paddles right and you did your mm-hmm. your testing and your review why why didn't they tell you they updated it right or when did they update it well there's like a couple thoughts here of a couple things that could have happened so here's my theories one uh it changed at some point okay that's one theory the second theory is just inconsistency in China. So like maybe the one I have right now is actually a dud and something happened with like when they were doing the peel ply and something really weird would have had to happen, but it's so rough to my hand. I don't, anyways, that could have also happened. And then I don't think I really have a a third theory or, you know, maybe the first one they tried to send me was different. I don't know. There's like a couple different theories you could probably come up with, but I don't know. I probably really need even one more to just see if it's like the same as what I have now or something. Yeah, I got to see it. And now I want to get all three of them to compare to see if they're different. Uh, So Connors, Zane's, and then the the BQK like um, themed one. Uh, I want to check it out to see if they're the same or not. But also I noticed on the Connor Garnett ones, because I love the way that one looks. It's just really clean. But then I looked at the edge guard on the side, and they have, like, the specs all up on the side and, like, Pro XR all up on the edge tape. Uh -uh. Like, it's just real busy on the edge guard. And I'm like, come on. You're so close. They were so close. They took some good design notes. I even commented on the post. I was like, hey, looks like Connor Garnett took some design notes on that paddle. Oh, you did? (laughs) (laughs) Did he respond back or did did Pro XR say anything? Well, if he did, if they did, I didn't see it. I'm terrible at seeing my Instagram notifications, but I I had to leave a comment. I'm just going off topic a little bit, but I don't know how you keep up with everything that you do. Do you keep up with the social media messages? You have the Discord. You have the newsletter. You have so much going on. and (laughs) And I added the Facebook group. And you had it a Facebook group. Like I, I just came back from Beer City and Seattle, and like I haven't been as active. Like I think I just posted my, my last video like today on my own channel. I've been making so much content for other people, but I can barely like I'm not even doing much, and I can barely keep up. So I, I'm convinced at this point that you found a way to clone yourself like two or three times <laughs> to do all this Dude, stuff that you're doing. If I could clone myself, like two more of me, I'd be a machine holy mo- you guys would see paddle reviews of every paddle on the market it would oh be nuts gosh. okay so here's here's the thing instagram i'm honestly terrible about keeping up with these days like i i don't see when people comment I, like i might look at the comments for the first hour and then after that i don't look because i honestly i just forget there's so many like you said there's just a lot of things going on to keep up with and instagram is like one of the lowest priorities for me so DMs, I frequently miss ones or forget to respond to ones that are, you know, semi-important or there's a good question that I actually want to answer. Mm-hmm. Um, but like here's here's a great example of what will happen. I will take a break from editing a video and I'll go like check Instagram DMs. And then I'll like there's the filtered box and I'll tap one. 
And I'm like, oh, okay, that's a good question. And then I'll get a phone call or I'll like something, food comes out of the oven. And then I just completely <laughs> forget. And since it got marked as red, I just completely forget to go back to it. Like that, you know, mm. more DMs fill it up or whatever. So yeah, Instagram, that's honestly, I think the only one that I have a really, really hard time keeping up with. I'm pretty decent about the other ones. Not emails, the DMs, the Slack messages. And I don't even have that many. That's the thing. Like, I know I don't have that many compared to you and to even just some other people I know. But just the influx is just my brain. It's just too much. I've really found recently what getting to this stage in the business has shown me is that uh, I just needed and still need to implement way better systems to make things work. Like, I think I really enjoyed being able to kind of be a little more like loosey goose with my schedule. It's like, well, I'll do emails at this point and maybe I'll take a phone call here and it doesn't really matter. Now I'm trying to be like this time, like my Monday tomorrow is extremely structured. Like I know pretty much hour by hour what I will be doing tomorrow and I'm going to try as hard as possible not to deviate from that and just get Mm -hmm. done what I know I need to get done. Because I just found that if I do it the way I was doing it, Things I just you could miss targets so easily. It's like, well, I was going to have this review done this week, but like I'll do it next week. I don't want to be doing that anymore. I want it to be like this video, like a real business. It's like it's going to be done this week. Get it done. Yes. You're an inspiration to us all, Chris. Yes, (laughs) We're trying. We're trying. But um, last thing uh, that I well, a couple more things. But on this uh, grit note, uh, when Ben was playing Yates Johnson, I heard that he kept saying this is a joke uh, throughout the match, and I think yeah, even wait, in his wait, what's he playing with though? Yates is playing with the engage, the new engage that Ultra? just came out. Oh, no, they, the what? engage pro. There's an engage pro. See, I'm out of the loop. What's going on? Here? What's up <laughs> with this engage pro? So this has been a prototype that some of them have been playing with. Um, I think it was basically Engage admitting that the Ultra was a flop because they don't sell the Ultra anymore, and the Engage Pro is $260. It's a raw carbon fiber T700 face, Okay. Um, yada, yada, yada. So I got challenged. It passed. But I've heard things about this paddle now from a few different people that, like, I'm just going to have to get it in my hands and see if anything happens because, like, you know, it's hard to confirm you know, rumors or whatever, but I've just heard interesting things about like, you know, the grit seems to be like super high or there's just some other issues. So we'll see. The fact that Ben was challenging, it makes me think he obviously felt something was up and maybe, maybe just maybe that means this paddle will not suck like the ultra. And (laughs) if that is the case, I will honestly give engage huge props because I have never seen a company in pickleball act as fast as them when a paddle has flopped Hmm. like true that paddle came out in april and they've already scrapped it and replaced it with a completely different one you're talking about they they replaced oh they replaced the ultra so the ultra is no longer yeah the ultra is gone like it's just the pro the engage pro now okay so the pursuit is so i'm looking up right here is the called the pursuit pro is that what it is yep oh so this is actually raw t700 carbon fiber Yep. Gra- okay, versus the graphite they were using before, which is essentially the same material. So basically, well, there was like kind of like a weird spray on for the grit before instead of like the peel ply thing. So like my guess is spin is drastically better now. Mm, okay. All right. Engage. Stepping up. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Deckel or Jesse are going to play with this one or nah. I think in the description of it, they cl- they list the players that are using it and I think they listed Jesse, Deckel, Darren, or Darren, DJ, um, Yates, probably 100. I, they listed this, a bunch of players, and they were like, they're already using it. Dang, this thing is 260 bucks? Yep. What? Right? That's, that's still expensive. That's kind of nuts. It better be good. It better be good. Dude, even their old encores are 160 still. Wait, 160? I thought those were like 120. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Maybe with the code or something, you get a 120. Uh, but I remember I bought mine for a closer. It's like 120. But on their site right now, it shows 160. Okay, 160. That's like, that's too much for the Encore today. Uh, 
Yeah, I think I think I could, here's the thing. Maybe one fifty, I, I could probably go. I'm like, okay. Here's the thing. I I can under even though I think two hundred sixty, especially for the ultra, was like just so insane. The the thing I will give them props for is the lifetime warranty. I think that is like. True. In a day and age where warranties are crap from some companies and it's impossible to get a warranty, it's impossible to get a hold of them. I've never personally gone through Engage's customer service, but my mixed partner has had a couple edge guards replaced and it seems to go smooth. It's like, for some people, that extra money is worth the lifetime warranty. So yes, I like I would agree. That's a good thing to factor in when there's other companies doing like three and six month warranties and they're impossible to get a hold of. Like <laughs> Even if that, three to six months, even if that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, even if that. So, you know, we'll see. I I asked them for the paddles. We'll see if they'll send them over. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll check them out. We'll see. Maybe they're good. All right. All right, last thing. Well, I just, this is the kitchen. Uh, a couple of you last week were like, hey, where's the kitchen? And oh, I was like, dude, huh. totally like, for, for, forgot about the kitchen, dude. Yeah. Dude. I just, honestly, I just forgot to say we made it to the kitchen. We had a kitchen in there. I just didn't. Been said. So thanks for the reminder, guys. I appreciate that. Yes. They keep <laughs> okay. you honest, Chris. They keeping us honest. That's right. They are. Uh, and that's why we love them. So I just want to talk about my team tournament. So we already uh, talked a little bit about the the practice, which oh, did not go so well for me. You just yeah, gave up. Yeah. So, honestly, yeah. genuinely, that is the most embarrassing thing to me ever in pickle. Thankfully, everyone was so understanding. Everyone was like, dude, like, not that we get it. Like, <laughs> I, I just felt, dude, I felt like such a jerk. I did, I've i heard about people doing this. I've seen it happen, and I just, I don't want to be that guy, so I felt I felt really bad. Um, but anyways, team tournament. We'll just go over what this was. So we have two uh, bigger facilities in Minnesota. One is Lucky Shots Pickleball. The other one is Mega Pickle and Pong, and Ooh. basically Who'd they did this for? event. I played for uh, Mega Pickle and Pong, and... They basically, it was like a club war type thing. So it was like, <laughs> you could qualify to play on the Lucky Shots team, or you could qualify to play on the Mega team. And I'm good friends with uh, the owner of Mega. So I, I oh, played so you for his didn't team. have to qualify. You just went. Oh, no, I your... had to qualify. Oh, really? Oh, I, yeah, no. I still had to, I still had I to play. You know, if I were you, I'd just been, hey, I'm the pickleball studio. What's, what's good? Put me on this team. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I got you slotted for the 3 5 division. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny so they had three divisions um it was like you know it was basically like a they broke it down differently but in terms everyone's used to it was like 3035 and then 40 plus which mm -hmm. the 40 plus division was basically a 45 plus division like everyone in that division dupers over four five for sure okay. so okay uh that's basically what that division was so okay here's how it worked uh there was a last month there was a day where you had to play men's doubles and you only eight people could play in the qualifier. So I was one of eight that got to play in it. You played with everyone in the qualifier. And then at the end of the day, they totaled up all the points that you got. And you played it MLP style. So rally scoring 21. And at the end of the day, they calculated who had the most points. And you had to be in the top two to make the cut. So on day one, I was number two or number three. And there was people like really close behind, like one, Ooh, two, three points behind. The ten. But then... The next day you had to play mixed and your mixed score was combined with your men's score. So you had to be good at men's and mixed. Anyways, long story short, I ended up getting second overall for the men's. So I qualified just barely. I think I w someone was like four points behind me. Oh, um, close. Wait, how far were yes. you um, compared to the number one? Uh, one or two points. Okay, so I it's think. all very tight. Super tight. Yeah, like the top five people were all within like five or six points of each other. It was really tight. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so qualified and then, you know, had the practice and then the team tournament. I really didn't know what to expect going in. I didn't know how big of a deal they were going to make this. I saw the advertising on Facebook, but when I got to the event to start warming up, dude, it was honestly pretty cool. They had a whole live stream set up. They had like a PPA style cam. They had a tracking cam and they had a kitchen cam. And Ooh. there was, we were, we were only using one court. There was like seats. Everyone was like surrounding the court. It was like a, it was cool energy. Honestly, I started getting a little nervous when I got there <laughs> because dude, I'm watching, I'm watching the like 4-0 and below bracket. And it, it was like being on championship court where in the middle of the point, everyone goes dead silent 
And then, like, when someone wins, like, everyone's, like, you know, hollering Clapping and whatever. And Cause, okay. Yeah, because it was, you know, t- you had people from Mega and you had team people from Lucky Shots and everyone was kind of hooping and hollering or whatever. So I was like, shoot. I was like, I have not ever played in a condition like this. Like, this is <laughs> this is different. Oh, and shoot, uh, that's, I mean, you 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 got it, dude. You've been competing in the world class, you know, with speed cubing. It's probably <laughs> no true. big deal for you. It would it would be similar to that a little bit. Uh, so, anyways, we warmed up. Uh, I it turns out that we were actually getting a uh, team mega was getting their butt kicked uh, before I got there. So our first match, the three zero match, we lost zero four. We they just Ooh. clean sweeped us in four games. The three five one. We were one and three, and I was like, oh, and we were so close to going to a dream breaker on that one. So mm. the last game, which would have been to tie it 2-2, I think our team lost 22-24. Oh. And I was like, oh, it's like, you were right there. You were so close. So uh, almost got that one. And then ours, there was a, I knew the two guys on the other team. One of them is my friend, Wes. He's an awesome guy. And then the other guy, his name is Jake. So Wes, I know pretty well. I've known him for a while. He loves to trash talk. Leading up to this tournament, oh, he's he messaging me. Oh, so much Every trash day. talk. He's like, actually, he messaged me the day of our practice. He had no idea we practiced. And uh, mm-hmm. he was like, dude, we are going to crush you. He's like, you guys are going down. And I messaged him. And I was like, dude, I just had like the worst practice of my life. I was like, honestly, yeah, probably. I was like, well, I was like, oh, I was you? pretty down on myself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You let <laughs> dude, him I'm know? telling you. I, I was like yeah i just i was not in a good mood but he was he was doing a bunch of trash talk and we were going back and forth okay women's crushed them okay i can't remember what we beat them like i don't know let's say it was something like 21 17 or 21 16 i was like and our women were pretty stacked so like we probably thought that was gonna happen going in um men's i was like okay let's do this my partner he Who's is like six two. Uh, you wouldn't know him. His name's Danny Schoen, I believe. Okay. Dude just has a Ferrari forehand. Like by all definite, this dude's forehand is a rocket. So when we did practice, I was like, "Here's the plan, dude. I'm gonna play the right, and all I'm gonna do is try and get you a ball that is shoulder height, and then you're gonna end the point, okay?" Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that is exactly what we did, and I think we won. I don't remember the exact score, but like wait, wait, so, 21. Go ahead. Yeah. I was wondering, how did you do that playing the right? Did you, were you doing a lot of speed ups? Like what was your strategy to try to get him those shots? I mean, it, yeah, it would have been like a speed up that I thought he could clean up or, you know, just dinking and then something with a misdirect. But honestly, here's what was interesting. I don't know if uh, other people were also nervous in this format because I know Jake's play decently well, and I also know Wes's play quite well. He's always mm-hmm. been a better player than I am. So I don't know if they were nervous, but they just like everyone's game felt very off. Like it didn't feel like very conventional pickleball where there was a lot of dinking. It felt like the points were pretty quick overall, um, especially if Danny got a high ball. It was just like over very fast. But yeah, that was generally my plan was like do a lot of dinking until he can come over and just push me out of the way and then finish the finish the point. Um, <laughs> nice. So that was great. We won like 21-17. And then now we're two games up. And then yeah. I play mixed with my friend Sydney. We play together all oh, yeah, the time. Sydney. She's awesome. Sydney. Sydney's yeah. awesome. Yeah, she's like one of our best females in the state. Yeah, she's, she's very good. Yeah, she's a rock star. Um, and then we also just, we won that one really, like 21-15 is what I think the score was. Um, okay, so now. So it was. Go ahead. Yeah, no, so now your division. So how, how, okay, how did the rest of the results? You only had, what, three divisions to play? I'm guessing like 3-0, 3-5. Yeah, three, five, we five, were the five. last division. Okay, so you overall, even though you won your division, you lost the match. Well, so our division, so we won our division 4-0. We won all four yep. games. Okay. Um, and then, but they, so basically here's how it worked. We won ours, which meant we got gold for our division. We got our medals. We got our registration money back. But then... Uh, Lucky Shots was like the club winner because they won more right. games. The than overall us. club winner. All right, that's yeah. what I was asking. It was five to seven, I believe. Okay. And in terms the, of games. Who was on the other Lucky Shots team? Anybody I know? Uh no, you wouldn't have known anyone. Uh not from the higher division or the, the lower division. Really? You already nobody I know? Yeah. Wait, who who didn't play? Omric playing there? Onik? Well, Sammy? okay, so <laughs> there was a 
there was a pro exhibition match, but I uh, don't think that counted towards. Maybe it did. From my understanding, I don't uh, think it did. But in the exhibition, it was Omric, Logan, Sammy, and then Sammy's partner, Tyler. And I huh. believe Sammy and Tyler won that. Mm. So here's what I'll say. I loved this event. I thought it was fantastic. I told the owner of Mega, I was like, please do this again next year. And also, please include if we could get like three maybe four more clubs to do it like a lifetime uh and then some of our other facilities it would be sick because if you had like a bracket to get to a championship match honestly i loved all of this like it felt really cool to have like a streamed court everyone watching cheering like it was an awesome format i i thoroughly enjoyed my time it was great all right all right and so this begins now to get that uh dopamine hit again I'm just going to have to go pro. So forget the paddle content. <laughs> you guys are never going to see a review again. I'm just going to pick a paddle, stick with it. I'm going pro. Okay. Well, I'll be there to see it. Shoot. Go, Chris. That's right. <laughs> Cheering you all the way. And you're going to be going pro with the shirt 3-5 forever. Oh, you know. You already know if I was playing pro, I'd be wearing that merch. Oh. Uh, 100%. Yeah, there's that no way so I would. Bad. Yeah. So. Uh, very cool format. Uh, I would tell other states and areas if you can do that um, yeah. format. That's something that's something that do we're it. trying it's to do awesome. here. It's awesome for sure. Something like that. I just wasn't sure how it was going to look, but uh, the MLP style format in tournaments are picking up here in like Oklahoma and Texas, like very like strongly. I've been mm-hmm. asked. I, I didn't even know because I just came back from Beer City in Seattle and I got a bunch of messages. People were asking, "Hey." do you want to play on my MLP team for this weekend or this week? And I was like, what? Like I got so many messages and I was like, there's more than one. I thought maybe there was one, but there's more. And I was like, oh my gosh. And there's something happening all of in Texas. People are asking me to come through and I'm like, okay, I don't know what's going on here, but something is clearly taking off here, which is cool yeah. to see. Cool no, to see. It's, it's sick. I, I think that team format is awesome. I really liked getting the to inter, play against everyone. The inter-club competition within the state, that's really that's really cool and i think if you know if your state or your town or whatever can support that like definitely go for that kind of like uh arizona kind of does something like that right with the uh, at the orchard right they yeah have their own teams yeah their own yep neighborhoods within phoenix i think that's really cool so for sure yeah Let's see. I, I and here's my thing i right think now. it's it's way cooler than a regular local tournament i think it's cooler than a ladder league i just yeah i don't know you felt like you were playing for something yeah exactly yeah yeah playing for something it was it was good so i'm I'm excited for more of that but yeah i think that's uh pretty much all i got you got anything else no man that's it that's uh shoot my pickleball fix for for this week after a quick little (laughs) kind of mini break for me so you know i'm glad you kept me up to date with things you know yeah, for sure. No, it was fun. But uh, yeah, thanks guys for tuning in. And uh, well, actually, will you leave next week? Aren't you going to Texas? Um, yes, I'm leaving again. Oh my gosh, I'm okay. So do Zayn I out. have to do I have to do a solo pod again, or how are we doing it this time? Uh, we can pre-record one. I mean, I'll bring. Uh, you know, what, it'll what be day fine. do we need to record? We can either pre-record one, or we can still record on Sunday. I'll be with Brian, and I know he has the same mic you have so we can do another one like okay what do you tell me what you want to do if you want to pre-record one we can pre-record one. what day would we have to pre-record it'd have to be like tuesday since there's i don't know oh yeah no we're we're doing it yeah we'll do it while you're in texas then (laughs) do you do you you want to do you want to guess do you want to guess we can get we can get brian from building pickleball i'll be with him Oh, have a, have a guest. I thought you were saying, do you want a guess? And I was like, guess no, what? <laughs> no, no, no. We could have a guest. We could have Brian from Building Pickle. Uh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah, work it we'll out. We'll chat but about it. At the very least, I'll be in Texas and we'll do the pod, either you and me or potentially with the guest if you want to do that. But bring your, to- bring your recorder and your mic. It's funny that we're talking about this on camera because the people totally don't care about this, but right. you guys get to hear what the planning process is like. Right. The planning process, how Chris and I do things. Okay. I'll bring, oh, do you really make me, can I just use Brian's stuff? Aren't you, aren't you just driving? Huh? No, I'm not driving. I'm flying down there. Austin is oh, an you're eight flying? hour drive. If it was in Dallas, then yeah, I would drive because that's only oh, like a four okay. hour Okay. I thought, didn't you drive last time? I did drive one time to Austin, but I'm and not doing it this time. Didn't like it? 
Okay. I mean, it's just a lot. Okay. It's a commitment. It's a commitment. That's an eight hour drive. Okay. Well, just find out if Brian has two good mics that he can actually record into at the same time. You might just need to bring like, you, you know, your pod yeah, yeah. thing or whatever. But gotcha. My anyways, the people, people don't need to hear this. So we'll, uh, no, they want to know. We'll they catch want, you guys they, next they, they week. They the behind the scenes. <laughs> they want to hear about the behind the scenes. Okay. They love us. Fair, fair. I think. Hopefully. Uh, sometimes. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week. All right. See ya. Peace. Peace.